is Trey McKinney the most controversial rookie to ever join the elites? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So before we get started, if you can do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family. And let me just say thank you to all the people that have subscribed, become part of the team and family, and have just commented, watched the videos, and just been amazing. I am completely humbled, I'm appreciative, and I can't say thank you enough, so thank you. Now before we get into it, this is just an opinion, and it is no shade against Trey, but his recent disqualification at the Leeds on Smith Lake seems to be happening more than it should. And at this point in time, I'm wondering if he isn't the most controversial person to join the elites in some time. Now, this doesn't mean he isn't a good person or a bad person or not just a fantastic angler, but controversy seems to be following Trey in his first season. And some of it is his own problem and self-doing. So let's recap. Remember, he ran the no motor zone, had that incident with Gerald Swindle. He also was the person that self police and self-reported himself for running that no motor zone and got that minor 45 minute penalty. But before that, when he was still an open angler, he went out and got fishing spots and waypoints supposedly to help him know the elite schedule much better and that wasn't allowed for elite anglers. To make more sense of it, the elite anglers aren't allowed to go to the places that are on the schedule for the following year and fish. They're not allowed to ask for information. They're not allowed to do a bunch of stuff. But as an open angler and someone who wasn't elite angler, yet Trey was allowed to go to areas and fish and learn those areas from other people, guides, whomever. I don't know who he got the information from, but he was able to do it. And I think he admitted it on a podcast or something else. And Bass has now changed the rules, so that can't happen with the open anglers either. So when he did this, it wasn't a rule that he was breaking. But as an elite angler, you're not allowed to do it. But he was not an elite angler when he did it. But was it right or wrong? I guess that's up to whoever. And he's caught a lot of grief because he is a scoper. And right now, forward-facing sonar is one of the hottest topics. But he is great at scoping. And he has been phenomenal this year on the elites. And before the incident that we're going to talk about, he was leading angler of the year points and that's saying something with one or two tournaments left and then of course there was the trait Zaldane issue that he said that he got information from his partner that we don't know is true or false but let's just keep it real trait speaks for a lot of the elite anglers and she's able to say things that the other anglers can't so there's probably some validity to it but until there, he's proven guilty I just have to say he's innocent and don't take that wrong I just think you're innocent until you're proven guilty that's just me and in that one case, you could have put any angler in. I would have had the exact same take on it. You could have put Chris's name in there. And I would have said, look, don't get, let's not throw shade on Chris before we know he's, he's, he's guilty. But that would have been weird though. Then yesterday, day two, Smith Lake, he had his weight disqualified. And he was having an absolutely ridiculous day on Smith Lake. He was probably going to bring in 16 plus pounds, which is absolutely huge. And what happened is, is he received a phone call from his mom saying, you're late. He then rushed back, was seven minutes late, and got seven pounds reduced. So for every minute that you're late, they take away a pound of your, your bag for that day. So he ended up with nine pounds or something. But that isn't where his weight was disqualified. When you're out on the water, you're not allowed to accept phone calls from anyone. And mom calling you to tell you that you're late is against the rules. That rule is C3-14. Now you can receive a phone call if it's scheduled with the tournament director but in this case his mom knew he was running late called him because he was having he was doing so well fishing and having so much fun he didn't think that he was going to be late or didn't realize the time so he came in weighed his fish got the seven pounds removed because he was seven minutes late and then later self-reported him for the rules violation which then disqualified the whole bag weight for day two on smith lake and here's where we're going to be a little critical of trey first off i think he really needs to go back and read the rules of bass these mistakes or these penalties or these little things are hurting his chances to win angler of the year they're also giving him a slight reputation as someone who doesn't follow the rules and in your rookie year having several now rule violations it either means he has paid zero attention to the rule book or he gives no shit about it and he's hoping that maybe he doesn't get caught 
Now, I think that he's self-policing himself and self-reporting himself, so obviously he wants to follow the rules. But for whatever reason, he doesn't seem to remember the rules. And in this tournament, with the disqualification of his day two weight, it might have taken him out of contention for Angler of the Year, which then gives all these people who don't like Trey more ammunition, more gas to throw on the fire. But I think Trey is buying the gas with all these little mistakes. He's giving everybody the ammunition that they want. And I think he really needs to sit down and know the ABCs of the rule book to another level before going fishing. And while that might not be what everyone wants to hear and they're going to be people for and against this that's all right i i respect your opinion but these are things that are continuously happening around now we're not six or seven tournaments in and we have four or five incidents that we can account for and trey won a tournament and has an unbelievably bright future and bass loves him but you can't keep making mistake after mistake make sure you watch that video before every tournament make sure you know every dotted i in that rule book and stop making these little simple stupid mistakes because i believe he can do whatever he wants right now unless they change something with forward facing zoner and then we'll see what happens because that's everyone's take they can catch fish with it can they catch fish without it we don't know but if they still have it he's still going to be really amazing but what do you think do you like trey do you think he should follow the rules a little bit more do you think it's just stupid mistakes that he's making and that's not saying he's stupid i just think that he needs to concentrate on the little things because when you get in the routine of making mistakes mistake after mistake after mistake. When it comes time in the big game, you're going to make the same mistakes. So tell me what you think about Trey and these rules and these mistakes that he's made. Are they good or bad? Can he win Angler of the Year still? I'd like to know. So comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Cheers.